after eight years, can finally smile again. America's back. And it's just it is such a moving experience to watch on YouTube the, the inauguration of our new president. To see someone who actually takes uh, takes seriously his promise to uh, uphold the Constitution. It's really quite incredible. I mean, you know, when I reflect back on the past eight years, you know, shortly after Obama took office, and I had a nice job, was making 50000 a year, fresh out of college, fresh out of seminary, and uh, had a wonderful job in a historical synagogue as a rabbi, and that was when Bush was still the president. And then the economy just went down the tubes as soon as Obama took office. They couldn't afford to, to keep me full time. My, my salary went down from 50000 a year to 12000 a year. Could barely make ends meet. Stuck on all kinds of public assistance I don't want to be on. Uh, all thanks to Obama. And now, to have a president who upholds the values that America was based on. It's just so incredible, and it, it really, I feel, you know, it's, it's apropos that this took place in the same week as Martin Luther King Day, because really so much of what Dr. King stood for is really, I think Trump is more of a fulfillment of Dr. King's dream than Obama. <laughs> Because Dr. King said that he dreamt that people would be judged not by the color of their skin. And it seems like we had a person who was totally unqualified for the past eight years who was, who was elected because of racism. We basically had someone who was elected because of the color of his skin and not because of the content of his character. And although Trump is a very flawed character, he's not trying to hide it in the ways that Obama did. Obama put on this whole fake show of being this very good charactered person when we know, when you read his own autobiography, and he talks about how he was on drugs and all these things, and, you know, <laughs> where was that content of his character then, you know? You know, we're, we're experiencing something, and here's a man, although indeed very flawed, but he doesn't drink, he doesn't take drugs. He's a totally different type of person, but also it's much more historical. I think it's a greater historical feat that we have a president who has never served in any government capacity before, neither in politics nor in the military, which is the first time we ever had that's much more historical than just happens that a person's skin is black. Like, who cares what color someone's skin is? And I'm really sick of the liberals, you know, labeling us as racist because we disagreed with Obama's policies. I was from the, you know, when I was a kid, the one who I wanted the most to be president was Alan Keyes. I remember that very strongly, you know. I felt that Alan Keyes was a much better candidate than Bob Dole. You know, this is what I remember when I was a kid, you know, and when, when Dole was running against Clinton. And in the primaries, he had Alan Keyes. And I was like, Alan Keyes, he has the content of the character. It wasn't about the color of his skin. Just He happened to be a black man, but he was a man who stood up for the values that America needed. Um, so don't accuse me of being racist. Just be, In fact, I think the left are more racist. When you hear them say things like, oh, Obama is so, he, he, you know, he, he's, so, he's so articulate. And, and, you know, what they're really saying is he's articulate for someone of African descent, you know, and that's not, you know, that, that's that's really racism when, when you hear leftists, you know, fawning over how articulate Obama is, you know, they're really saying, you know, for a black man is what they're really saying because really the left are the more racist people. The right are concerned with individual rights and individual freedoms. The left looks at the collective and don't care about the individual. Now, this inauguration was so incredible. The words that Mr. Trump said that when you open 
open your heart to patriotism, there's no room for prejudice. That is really what America is about. I, I was reading, and I've been reading um, at work for the, uh, in the honor of Martin Luther King Day, I was reading a prayer that a, a, a conservative rabbi, Rabbi Uri Miller, recited at the March on Washington together with Dr. King, and he said that we will thank God for the privilege of living under the stars and stripes by giving to bigotry no sanctuary to persecution, no um, uh, no, I, I don't remember, the, the, it was a quote from George Washington actually that he said in the synagogue in the, when he visited the Toro synagogue um, to persecution Sorry, I, you know, I, I I don't prepare for these videos the way I should. I just very speak very ex extemporaneously, and I'm just so overwhelmed with emotion. I'm just at the end. How can anyone accuse Mr. Trump of being a bigot? I mean, the first person to speak after him was a rabbi wearing a yarmulke, an Orthodox rabbi, Rabbi Marvin Heyer, a man who accomplished great things, who stood, who, whose whole life has been dedicated to fight bigotry. And it's, it's, I'm so proud to see a rabbi, even before, you know, probably one of the greatest preachers in America would be Billy Graham. And Billy Graham's own son what came after Rabbi Heyer came even before Billy Graham's son, before Franklin Graham. Where do you see something like that? This is because the value of America is that we don't discriminate, we don't judge people by their religion or their race or anything. And that's not what Donald Trump is about. And I, it's just so sickening how the left has ha, has slandered Mr. Trump to accuse him of being a racist when he's the furthest thing from a racist. <coughs> Mr. Trump has gone out of his way to be welcoming to people of different religions and different races. All throughout, all throughout his career, he was the first to open up Mar in Mar-a-Lago to open up his country club to, to African Americans and to Jews. When all the other country clubs didn't let blacks and Jews into their country clubs, Mr. Trump let them in. His own daughter is Jewish. All of his his daughters-in-law are Jewish. His son-in-law is Jewish. You know, I mean, what? how can anyone think that this man is a bigot? And I don't think he's a bigot against Muslims either. I Where I work... Many of the, my Muslim co-workers told me that they voted for Trump because he's here for all Americans, doesn't matter what your religion is, and they came to America to escape the terrorism that he intends to fight. It's not, he's not fighting against Muslims, he's, he's really trying to help all Americans, no matter what. And I really am hopeful and looking forward to this wonderful presidency. Of course we have to pray that things should go in a peaceful way, in a good way, he should be protected. And he shouldn't make mistakes. Um, but I'm really excited. I'm really happy. Again, I, you know, I haven't felt this happy in eight years. And it's such a blessing to see, um, finally, to see America be back. Uh, of course, he's not perfect. He's not who I would have wanted. I would have rather seen, like, Ted Cruz, who's a more strong constitutionalist. But really, and, you know, I feel maybe a lot of Trump's views are maybe too liberal, actually. But, in a way, it's good because he has a foot in each world and he can really bring this country together. And I just hope that the media stops and, and people like George Soros and these type of people stop their nefarious, really, um, slander of this man. I just don't understand it because, you know, they take quotes that he says out of context... And, you know, he's a, he, he doesn't speak the way that most politicians speak, and so he's very easily misunderstood. But if he does something wrong, I'll be the first to fight against him. But, uh, uh, but give him a chance. He just started his job, and even before he started, he's been doing great things. Let's look forward and pray that God should bless this country now, that the as, as President Trump said, not President-elect anymore, President Trump said, that the power is back to the people. The rule is back to the people. We don't have this aristocracy of the government, which is everything that the revolution was fought against. We have the power returned to the people, returned to the Constitution. This is really a great day, and it's. I just hope 
and pray that it will be as good as we hope and pray and much better.